What's going on, everybody? We are the Midnight Geeks, and tonight's going to be a fantastic night because we're introducing a new segment here this evening called the Midnight Talks, where we just take a moment out of our lives, our busy, busy schedules, and bitch and moan and complain about certain things in the industry that we all love. Yeah. Maybe, 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 <laughs> maybe not so much bitch moaning and complaining, but we are sure as hell going to talk about something tonight. The topic that I placed on the table this evening, it's right there on the table that I see right there, yeah. is favorite past time video games, favorite present time video games, and essentially what we want to see as a future video game in the future. Tomage, yeah. I'm, Tomage, I'm not going to lie, not sure where you got that from, because the only thing on the table right now is my legs. <laughs> and they're fine <laughs> they're legs, nice. and we can talk about them for a while, but I don't know if we can talk about them for enough time for people to care about. I pulled well, it right write, out of my ass. We, right write, we write our notes well, on we, your legs. Well, <laughs> I was wondering why you wrote on my legs. <laughs> All right, somebody take a note. Write on Tyler's legs. <laughs> I'm going to take that note on Tyler's legs. <laughs> Damn right. Okay, well, I'm going to start off from here. I'm just going to pick a random person. Okay, how about Tyler? Go first. Oh, uh, Tyler, oh, la lay, oh, lay us some uh, real wisdom here right now. What is your favorite past video game? Oh, Something God. that your childhood grew around. My favorite past video game? Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm having... I'm having a strong debate within my mind because there's two games in particular that I think about when I think about my childhood. And one is uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, the, the remake for the, uh, the GameCube. Director's Cut. Uh, no, no. no. Oh, the Rita, Rita. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. The 2, two, two Battle, two the one with oh, Shadow. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. And then much after that, it's uh, Dead Rising 1 for the 360. Oh, However, for the purposes of this talk, I think I'm going to stem closer to Sonic Adventure 2 Battle as the my favorite game from my pastime, because out of the two of those, that game was definitely more of a molder for me in my childhood, because as I'm sure definitely Travis here can remember, because, you know, he, he was living with us in, in our parents' house whenever I would play yeah. this all of the time and you a little less so but you might also remember I would non-stop play that game for just hours and hours and hours and hours and it wasn't of course anything about the story and I didn't frequently have you know friends over to do the battle modes though although I did some of that and that was always that was always fun whenever that was able to happen. Didn't we t try a couple times doing the, the battle modes? Oh, yeah, no. I think we definitely tried a couple times, but yeah. uh, more often than not, the person I did that a lot with was uh, Danny. Danny, yes, yeah, Danny. it was Danny. Yeah, tall Danny. Oh, my Tall gosh. Danny. Big tall Danny. <laughs> yeah. And we, we did a lot of that, but more often than not, I found myself a lot more focused on the chow-raising aspect of that game. Oh, my God. Because... <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. The, the, uh, look, I was I was in that with you. I was in that. It was that was some of my favorite time periods. That was uh, that was it. some balls deep chow raising right there. I like I I love the story itself, the Sonic as well. But a bulk of it, like seventy percent of it, was just trying to farm crystals and animals just to raise the perfect chow. Oh That's, my God! Yes, oh and God. I would just play it for hours and hours and hours to the point. And I remember this because it was just such a significant time that you, Travis, were just so inclined to get me to play something else that you just kept throwing games out there for me to play because you were just tired of seeing me play <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and you're tired of just seeing me play the same levels and just raise these little infant things from, from their childhood into the greatness that I knew they could be. Well, Were, Weren't you trying to get them into like Fire Emblem at that okay, time? Okay. Around that time well, too? Yeah, okay. The reason why, by the way, Tyler, is because you'd already gotten the ultimate good chaos chow the ultimate evil chaos chow and i think you were just about to get the neutral chaos chow did you ever get that one no i never got that uh actually because i didn't i didn't get it but me and my friend danny the danny i was talking about earlier you guys uh we would she pretty much share the account so he got the ultimate neutral chow while i got the ultimate evil and the ultimate good because i deal a lot better in extremes because oh it's like my life because i'm oh always my. either too cold yeah. when i'm around people or i'm 
far too warm. Oh my god, those little chows too. My favorite was always not the the little racing competitions. Oh my gosh, it was like uh, it, oh the fights. fights. The <laughs> fights were where it oh was my at. God. We were actually placing money on this. Like my chow's well, better than yours. Well, look, like, well, I'm sorry, my chow's name was Champ. My main one was named yeah, Champ, Champ, so he I always won well, because he was a champ. He was a, he was a chaos chow. He could literally when he punched the other chows, they flew they to the other side. Boom. <laughs> yeah, like oh god, <laughs> it was like back, it was true. like the Man of Steel, but without all yes. of the destruction. Yeah, oh my death. gosh. And well, it was just such a warm place in my childhood because yeah. I just I don't know why I was so drawn to it. Maybe because it just uh, I, I appealed mean, to my. I, I I don't know. Admi admittedly, I might I don't know if I added to it or anything like that because I was big into it. Starting yeah. out, I don't exactly know why. I just I I don't even know what got got me to get the game. I was just I I was drawn to it. and I was like, oh, what is this? What are these? Oh my God, they are adorable. I know. I and, just, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was like how I long... can feed them lions. What? what? <laughs> well, they don't really feed them the lions. They just kind of like kind of like make out with the animals, I know. which kind of <laughs> creates some so, weird subtext, so. which actually is funny because it kind of gave Sega the idea later on to kind of push the limits of bestiality. <laughs> All right, that, that, is, that, is, oh a, that is another goodness. subject that we will broach another time, another day. So like that that's, the last, that's the last thing we want to get flagged for is bestiality. Oh. Um, well. Tyler. Favorite oh, present game at this moment. Favorite present game at this moment. Well, okay. Oh, geez. Uh, there's just... Because since that time I played Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, I I did branch out to so many games. So you're welcome there, Travis. Uh, did you go? <laughs> you're welcome there, Travis. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, just got so many, I just got so many series in mind. But I think, especially for right now, I'm going to have to say, because I've been playing a lot of Fire Emblem lately, and more specifically right now, oh, Fire God. Emblem Revelations. Love but Fire pretty Emblem. much any of the last four games, and I'm saying the last four games, not as like Radiant Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, uh, Awakening, and Birthright, but uh, more in tune, because Radiant Dawn and Path of Radiance, like they were really good, but... In, those are my yeah, favorites. They're definitely, they're really good. But Awakening and then oh, I, okay. the trilogy set of games, I'll just refer to them as that, really speak to me because of because of the marriage mechanic. And I'm not gonna lie, I really like it. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I am a big fat hunkin piece of shipping garbage. I cannot watch any form of media without shipping shipping and instantly putting characters together almost people. instantly and it doesn't matter how crack it could be or how, you know, tight it could be. I go all across the board. I mean, literally right now as we're recording this podcast, I'm wearing a shirt that says, "Hi, I'm Lapidot Trash." Lapidot being a ship from Steven Universe, which is one of my I favorite agree. um show right now but we're not talking about that but i like those games a because there's that like i've invested so many hours into just putting these characters together and not putting them together because of you know strengths and weaknesses and stats because that's boring like i get that ev <laughs> training nonsense but that's boring i want my characters to be happy i'll leave that shit to poke <laughs> i'll leave that shit to pokemon so i don't care if their if their child is going to be some sort of mage i'm going to put i'm going to put this this priestess together with this general because they're so cute together and they deserve each other and that's and <laughs> it's just appealed it just appealed to a nature of me in which I've kind of kept hidden for a while because I didn't really know how to approach how to how to broach being the, oh this kind of, this kind of fandom nerd with people for so long and then oh, okay. you... once I got out of high school for some reason that just all got thrown out the window oh, and okay. this game has really let me go into that and plus I love the, all the characters and all yeah. those games and all the story as well. Well, well I mean, uh, too, it, it goes back to our conversations that we had back whenever, uh, okay, yes, so Tyler and I uh, and Elena uh, but all partake in. Um, uh, I th do in we want? Do we want to hold hands for strength yeah. to say this? Yeah, yeah. They, they, Elena, we, get in here. But we get in here, Elena. Elena. They, they are all holding hands. We are right holding now. hands. I can assure. Right, we're we're doubly holding hands. Well, now. two two out of I don't three, know why. Two out of the three are doubly. Because we need to be strong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm already I, strong. We we read fan fiction, and I remember introducing Tyler to one of my favorite fanfic authors who did the the Paper Mario X. Uh, uh, pa Paper Mario X. Uh, 
X. Super Paper Mario X, uh, Paper Luigi X, Paper, Paper Mario, Paper Mario X, X, X 2, The Thousand Year Old Door. Oh. Which right, guys, who are we shouting out right now? Who's the author of this? Uh, the author of that, uh, she, she goes by Child of Heart on fanfiction.net, uh -huh. and uh, she more frequently uses her Tumblr when her Tumblr is uh, Renegade in Pursuit, I believe. So... Definitely, you know, check both of those out if you get the chance. Big shout uh, out to Child of Heart for making two of uh, the three Douglas brothers just what some so people consider happy. the worst kind of people. But, <laughs> but, but, I, but, but I wouldn't trade them for anything unless it's a Subway Gosh. sandwich. Maybe I trade it. Well, no, 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 no sponsorship. No sponsorship. No. We Go away, Subway. Trademark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my um, gosh. F uh, but, fan fiction aside, and everything leading down to that. But yeah, favorite current game being of you know Fire, Fire Emblem, Emblem, the yeah. last four games, the trilogy love, series, and Awakening. Love Fire Emblem. Yeah. Great characters, great marriage mechanics, great, great stories. He just. It, it made me feels. It took me on a feels trip. Took you on a feels trip. A feels trip. Trademark, trademark uh, Midnight Geeks. Feel, feels trip. Okay. Um, well, you, you stop right there. I'm I'm taking over this this uh, session. Big Brother Talmadge, the the our king and leader of the Midnight Geeks. Uh -huh. What is your favorite past? Nope, video game? can't can't do that yet because we're broaching three topics today. What? Tyler, what would you like to see in the future? Now, oh, yeah. that That's was funny. the question that I just... But you will get your turn. Okay. Are we, are we done now? Can I speak now? No. <laughs> no, we got to... We, <laughs> we both got, said we, no. We, 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 we got to dip down real Shut quick. Down. And then we'll get back. Shut <laughs> down. Both your older brothers wait, wait, like, no. wait, wait, no. I don't know if we need to dick down. You've heard it. Now, Tyler, future <laughs> video game, or even, even just like a genre or anything that you want to see gaming-wise... Come to the future. What is your amazing game? Now, whenever you first, you know, were saying that you wanted to do this and you came up, came to me with this topic, like I instantly knew what I wanted to do for the past video game relatively. You know, I was debating between Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and uh, Dead Rising, and then I instantly knew what I wanted to do for the present game. Well, I mean, because that's, that's simple. Yeah, no, it's, that's it's... simple. But then when it's like when you're talking about the future of gaming or what something I would want to see, then that really just caught me off guard because it's like, whoa, what do I want out of the industry? Mm -hmm. oh, no. what, is, what do I, as uh, who I would consider a, a veteran gamer, want out of the industry? And honestly... I'm kind of just making this up as I go along right now, but when I put some deep, high-intense, high-octane, thought-provoking thought into it in the past 30 seconds I've been rambling, <laughs> I honestly am thinking more into virtual reality because mm -hmm. I've seen some of that as it is right now, and honestly, it's kind of astounding. And I'm sorry if I took anyone's answer right there by answering, no, off, the, by answering off the cuff, but it's... I've just been so fascinated by that concept, by that idea, by what I've seen other people on YouTube do and what we've seen at VidCon when we were there that last, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. the virtual reality in general. Hopefully up to a point, and I apologize to... And, oh, yep, I knew this was coming. And I apologize to anyone in advance if you might uh, not feel too <laughs> warmly about this series as a whole, but... I'm sorry. For me, I would really like to see, you know, VR gaming go to a point like you see in Sword Art Online. Okay, well, Damn right. I think, <laughs> I think in the end, all of us kind of want that, because that's like... Because that's, like, that's something I think every everyone can agree like, on, that that's kind, a cool concept. Kind of like Ready Player One that was by Ernest Cline, uh, which you guys got to read. Um, I think I've got yeah. it on me, and you got to read it. It's just we want to see that, that immersion, because yes... It is simple to immerse yourself if you really love something, but then there's the next level of really immersing yourself in it. And I think we as gamers just absolutely want that. Well, you know, it, it brought up an interesting concept whenever I was watching Sword Art Online and thinking about virtual reality. This brought about a new dream, and Elena did help me realize that dream to a certain degree by <laughs> show, showcasing Disney to me. But They're oh. dating if you didn't know that. Oh, Wait, man. what? We are? <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm being so yes. Yeah. Uh, um, Get those so. viewers up. We got a couple in the group, guys. Yeah, a couple. We're right just there. like yeah. the game grumps. Yeah. 
<laughs> Love us. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, and some we lose, we, we lose like three thousand subscribers. Don't, Fuck! Don't, don't say that. We work so hard. I know. Like 3, we work yeah. really hard for that. Okay, Travis, what, what oh, were you what okay. were you saying? The the point I was going to make it, it awakened a dream in me, and whenever virtual reality gets to that point where it's like Sword Art Online, I would love for there to be <clears throat> some sort of superhero game where I could be a Superman-like figure, and I just went for that moment where I can fly up above the city line and look look down over towards the city <laughs> and see this huge, expansive world for how beautiful it is and, and know what it what it looks like, what the world looks like from his point of view. Like, that, that is a dream that I hope to realize well, one day. In a way, they've actually kind of broached on that with the VR that they've got right now. It's called Richie's Plank Experience. I saw it um, played by... I think Jacksepticeye mostly. It it was at, at first it just seemed like this elevator kind of game, but then you get this moment where you get further in, for, further in, and you can actually fly around the city, putting out flames and stuff. It's but it's more like a jetpack sort of thing. It's not actual <laughs> flight. Yeah. It's like it's propulsive sort mm -hmm. of flight. But they they are kind of broaching in on that um, area. When it comes to video games, that that was just like a light bit of thing. I think it was more like a demo of sorts, like and rather than a full game, because they were just putting out fires. Yeah. But they are starting into that, which is I that's it's amazing. Because it gets and back to that immersion, mm -hmm. and that's just something I'm looking forward to. Though it might come with its own set of problems, but I feel like we'll be able to work through that one. Yeah. Uh, even if you don't like Sao, we got the over we got Overlord, which by the way you guys should watch. It's just basically a bad uh, good Tony. guy acting like a bad guy being a good guy. Tony. All right. Yeah. Tony. Wait. No. Tony yeah. Tony. Told me so much oh, about that. Overlord is Tony amazing. I just started it and I love it. Just because it's the main character is just this, what you would see as an arch type of an evil villain, and he's just, I want to be good because <laughs> now this is real. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, Tyler, thank you for that. That was amazing. Good job, as, always, as always, good job. We got class. Oh, class. 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 Yes. Sorry. Class. Class. I'm, 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 I just want to let you know that I started the round of applause for myself, so just a little bit. Why of you gotta throw that out there? Just a little bit. Make us look supportive. Just a little bit of an egomaniac. Make us look supportive. No, narcissism traits aside, we gotta go next to our other. Oh, uh, wait. No, 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 I'm still in the show. No, no, no. We'll, get, we'll get back to. We gotta get to Alina now. Oh, me? Yeah, Alina. Yeah, we gotta get to Alina. I thought it was in between the two. Because no, I knew Travis would be over. We're working the edges. We're yes. working oh, from the okay. edges in. I like. I like going. Alina. I got. I like going in zigzags. Right now we're in a zigzag. Right now. <laughs> okay. Alina. Alina. Well, oh, no, you're going next. Up now that the okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, but now that the spotlight is on me. Yes. Favorite. Past childhood video game memory. If I can confess a little bit of something, I'm not typically a game player. I'm mostly a game watcher, and that's why I like uh, platforms like YouTube and Twitch and things like that. So Because I really like just watching somebody else have this adventure. Um, and I think that comes a little bit from my childhood and, and um, watching my brother play lots of games. Um, it was actually kind of a bonding thing between us. And the one of the games in particular that he actually did teach me how to play was um, Star Wars Battlefront Two. Yes. <laughs> so good. And I love that game so much. I still play it to this day. Yes, She's I good. still have my huge PlayStation Two. Oh, <laughs> Lena, honestly, you're pretty much better off just playing Battlefront Two because Battlefront. I tried. Battlefront 3 I, I tried to sucks, like the new Battlefront. I don't. Sucks. I can't get behind it. I can't. I just. I love just being able to go on and play my own campaign or my own. Um, oh. Just a, a Look, regular. Star Wars playlist. Battlefield 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what it is. And yeah. I, I've, played um, with, I've played with Lena, and I'll tell you right now, she rocks. She's very good. <laughs> I don't I, think we need to know anything about what you two no, alone. No, 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 oh, goodness, no, bias, goodness, yes. no biases here whatsoever. Uh, Battlefront 2 is a good... Is a good so thing good. to top off of because my my initial jump into Star Wars gaming, actually now that I think about it, was N sixty four. It was yeah. Star Wars Bounty Hunter, bro. <laughs> Bounty Hunter or Rogue Trooper? I can't remember which one. I remember well, not being wait. able to beat the beat it for the life of me. Oh, you did beat it. I did. Yeah, yeah, you beat it. it I am better than I thought. Because the, the, <laughs> the final mission was that stupid Millennium Falcon one, where you you where you flew where you and several other people flew Millennium Falcons into a literal Death Star esque looking facility. You blow up the core, you leave, 
and no one's sure if you actually made it out, but it's hinted that you did make it out. I am better than I thought, <laughs> and apparently I can't remember anything and worth a shit. Guess what? That that game is considered to be on par with how broken Superman 64 is, and I can confirm that because I'm playing that right now. Woo! But it, <laughs> so the fact that you beat it, amazing. Confirmed. Yeah. Oh, you well, confirmed um, badass. Rather here. than delving into any more past things, oh, we'll, we will broach that. This isn't a podcast that's going to end soon. Uh, favorite present video game at this time? What do you what do you feel that is? Oh, what? favorite present. Okay. Again, like I, like I said, I'm, I'm very much a, a video game watcher. I watched my brother play Minecraft right, like way back whenever it really started to get big. Um, and now that they're doing all these mods and things like that, it's, it's really coming back. But I'm just playing the, you know, just the generic, um, just, you know, survival mode where I can, I can just build things. Van- Van- vanilla survival mode. Pretty Minecraft, much, and that's, yeah. And, that's and fine. it's yeah. really just easy mindless almost playing because and i like things like that where i can just relax and um build things and live in my own world oh yeah oh yeah no i I, 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 there's something very drawing the the fact that it's not too heavy on like a that's why i don't typically like story mode games unless i'm watching somebody play it because mm -hmm. i just i like really easy gaming like that oh yeah no Um, i I watched travis play several games i much rather watch him play them than actually (laughs) do them um i don't know if that makes me sound no, no, no that, that puts you in the genre of like a casual game. Mm, yeah, right? it's not. It's you're not. You're not there for the hardcore mm-hmm. lore. Yeah. Lore, well, I do lore. like it, but that that's the thing. I just I really like to watch people have their own journey with it. Mm-hmm. You know, and in some cases, whenever I do really really like a game that I watch somebody play, I will play it like Minecraft and things like that. I'm I'm getting into the mods a little bit more. Uh, can I? Am I allowed to shout out to another YouTuber? Yeah, you yeah, should. I mean, I mean, what what are they gonna <laughs> no, do? No. What are they gonna do? Send the shout out back? Hey, we'll take it if you want to send. I it don't back. know if we're gonna <laughs> get that. Is more views for us. I don't know if we're gonna get one from Smosh Games. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no, probably, probably not. But, but no. their their Minecraft is really it's 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 super silly, and I love that about it. I just watch that all the time. They just finished up one of their survival, uh, kind of like um, Survivor style mods. And I really enjoyed that one. Uh, it's uh, so it's kind of like PBG kind of. is uh, is permadeath. People series. got voted off yep. the island. Oh, and things oh like that. shit! Yeah. <laughs> but it was Minecraft, and it was really really cool because it's this thing that can be turned into so many different things, and I love that about it. It's very versatile. Uh, yeah, no, mm-hmm. I I always loved it playing back in the day in the mm-hmm. day because I. Was that I am what you can consider, I guess, a veteran Minecraft player. Yeah, because you played it. I was there there since the beginning. I was there since the last week of Alpha, like literally. (laughs) I bought it in Alpha, and then Mm -hmm. a week later, it went over the beta, and then it became a little more expensive. But I got that DOS for like ten dollars back, you know, Mm -hmm. before it hit this huge mainstream pile. You you gotta do all of this nonsense for, and it was. Always a very enjoyable, relaxing experience. It's super for relaxing, me. even and, and that's so funny saying that because of uh, how scary it can get with survival mode. Oh yeah, no, but that's but it that, is, that even that's relaxing to me, especially after a day of work or but something. That's like part of the thing that gets my blood pumping a little in a good mm-hmm. way because it's it's Easy nice to have a, it's it's mm-hmm. nice to have a little bit of action to go along with all of this. Uh, so, yeah. relaxing world building Where it's got the pretty music and the oh, piggies uh, and the flowers uh, and then it turns nighttime and everything goes to hell. Uh, I've actually, <laughs> just, I've I've actually been shit in the handbag. I love meaning. making traps. I think that's one of my favorite things yeah. to do now. <laughs> Started out with a teeny little trap door trap and now and, I've expanded And now you're basically it. like becoming Batman, oh, right? Oh my goodness. You see Brandon, you know. <laughs> I like uh, watching YouTube videos and see how I can make my traps better. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Oh yeah, it's kind nice. of like my, my friend Brandon. He's very much like that. He really likes making making the traps and doing I all that. I want to ensure that nothing is still alive during the day. Creepers yeah, yes, are the worst. Yeah. Basically, call him Batman. And <laughs> really? then, yeah, no, that oh, because it oh, felt like okay. that because we were doing this like big King of the Hill match. I was I was about to mention that too. We were doing this go. big King of the Hill match. Yeah. It was me, uh, Brandon, uh, our friend Keegan who is a friend of mine from high school and then just a, a mutual friend of everyone else here except for Elena because I don't think I've ever really mentioned Keegan to you ever. Yeah, I've heard him in conversation before. Pro- yes. Probably. <laughs> and then and, and then one another friend following that same suit, David, 
and we were all basically doing a King of, King of the Hill style, I guess, match <laughs> where each one of us had to kill everyone else in this arena, I guess you could say, one time. And whoever did that first won. So Brandon's natural strategy was to basically become Batman and build like mm -hmm. a super fort with all like all these traps yeah. everywhere and, yep. and you know just be super complicated and super high tech and super mm -hmm. this and super that. Uh, wait, was Keegan actually there? Yeah. Yeah, Keegan was actually there. I just forget what he did because I don't think he really did much of anything. Oh, he, he... Wait, no. I think he did try to do something. He tried to bury himself straight underground. Yep. That's what he tried to do. Like burying oh, himself underground. But you gotta be careful digging straight down. Exactly. That. I mean, not necessarily straight down. Oh yeah. No, well, it eventually ended up messing him up because he yeah. died and came back to the surface. Then my friend David basically was a lone ranger and he just stalked the planes and hunted people down predator style, <laughs> which surprisingly was a lot more effective than you think. And then my grand plan was to hide out in the Nether. Yes. Because I figured yes, yes. if I could it survive. Was awesome. Hell, <laughs> then I then can, you can survive, survive anything. <laughs> and guess what? Oh, because oh, oh, at the oh. end of the day, I was the one who made it. Because the next person closest to me was well, David and Brandon. Because David got Brandon really quickly, surprisingly, for all that trap building he was doing. <laughs> I remember. It and then everyone else got each other really quickly. But then uh, they all realized I was the only missing link that they didn't have. So they all started chasing me down for like an hour and a half that through the nether awesome. trying to kill me while I, I basically watched, sabotaged yeah. their way through <laughs> it and used the environment to my advantage to get yeah. them killed and eventually win it all. It was, it was awesome. great. That was a great moment. I wish I could have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> I, wish, I, I wish that could have been recorded. This time. All right, Minecraft aside, Elena, mm -hmm. future of video gaming. What is something that you would like to see? Um, something that I guess I would like to see, it, it goes a little bit back to, you know, the virtual reality. I know that Minecraft w was one of the things that was trying to uh, explore that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, when they were showing, what was that expo that they showed that at? It was the Hololens for Microsoft. Uh -huh. uh, that was a that was a big uh, virtual reality thing mm -hmm. that they were doing. So I think that would be interesting, um, and just <laughs> just on a really really silly, girly if you want to say um, throwback, I would really really like something that. Something handheld or portable or something that can put all of those DisneyChannel.com old games onto so I can play them again. Okay. I have tried looking for them on different platforms go. and things like, you know, like the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody games and things like that. I know this is really, <laughs> this is not revolutionary in any way. I just want something that I can oh. put all of those games into and, and, and just kind of go back to that little world that I would go on to DisneyChannel.com oh, yeah. and just play those stupid games that they had underneath all the shows. I got you, I got you. More, I think that'd uh, be fun. I, yeah. I guess that'd be sort of like more reverse compatibility because... Kind of. Because, you know, some companies get it really right because, like, Nintendo Nintendo gets that, that sort of... They get that, Step they get like, that, like they a get virtual that, console they get that backwards, backwards compatibility, compatibility like down just hat. great because yeah. next, so next one up is play play Sony from PlayStation and then like yeah. trailing behind it I think is Xbox. <laughs> oh I do God. understand that the market for yeah. that is um, people our age though because those, those are some are, of the shows that yeah, you know those are the last generations that grew up with those things. But I mean, I would buy it. I'm just saying, <laughs> Disney. <laughs> I would be I would give you money for that. But I think yeah, that and also um really do ex explore the virtual reality a little bit more in in a way that it's whenever I think of virtual reality, I just think of how, where where do you have to do that? Like in what space and and how broad is that going to be for you? Do you know what I mean? Uh, well, outside they, of just the table that they, they showed they've, it on. Uh, they've already started something virtual reality wise a they've got like a warehouse and I don't exactly know what mm. kind of game setting it is but you're essentially it's like I think it's a shooter of some sorts but you are kind of like laser into tag it. Mm -hmm. but in your but in virtual reality mm -hmm. they, huh, they've set it up to where it is like walls or locked doors that you can't mm -hmm. go into uh, hallways to go in are open up. It's it's uh, it's a very pretty immersive shooter. Yeah. I can't. I, I do guess that not is another thing that is. you have to you know go out of your way for. What can people take home, you know, mm -hmm. and just experience for themselves where they won't like trip over well, their stuff if that, they're that. moving around. Well, and a lot of the a lot of the virtual reality games nowadays, 
honestly are very standstill, like mm -hmm. you're in there's one usually standing in so one location. Just, yeah. And then you're looking around yourself and solving things or shooting or doing whatever you need to do. Yeah. So you don't usually need to have a whole lot of space, but you know, you usually have to have be a careful. pretty emptied out. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of caution sticker oh, yeah, on no. that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's that's why earlier Tyler said he'd love to see virtual reality go in the direction of something like Sword Art or something like mm -hmm. Dot Hack, where you're. There you go. Yeah, that's a callback that I, I love. Dot, dot Hack. hack. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh man, we're gonna the original that. SAO. But yeah. we'll talk about that. Yeah, more we're we're yeah. gonna talk about that in a moment. But yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The the idea behind that of it's where you're, you're sitting down or laying down in a specialized, using specialized equipment that more or less takes your consciousness and puts it inside a video game world. Whoa. And the, the, that, would, that would be a way of being able to generate all that while allowing you to sit down. Tyler said that present its own problems, which it would, because mm -hmm. especially for people who are naturally escapists. If but there you, are lots of very intelligent people out there that can figure something out with that. Can they have yeah. more money to do it with than us? <laughs> well, yeah, to figure, to figure out so ways to make I'm, that equipment. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm you know, looking forward to seeing what they can do with that yeah. to make it you know, especially accessible. All right. Some excellent, some excellent points that we we'll love to hear. Virtual reality, Minecraft, and Battlefront Two. Yes. If you don't like any of those, what's wrong with you? Why are you know. listening to this podcast? I mean, come on. <laughs> it's like seriously. And now. Battlefront Two. What was uh, sparked my love of Star Wars? But yeah. go ahead. I I jumped the gun earlier, but now the gun is appropriately He's jumped. He's about to touch my gun. Damn yes. right. And I'm leaving. <laughs> and I mean the. And bicep. I'm leaving. So, come on, Elena. <laughs> Salvage. Yes. What's your favorite past game? Well, whenever whenever I came up with these topics or I was thinking about anything like, hey, 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 well, hey. I'm well, sorry. None, none of these beatboxing I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just talking to Elena about threesomes. I bet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that conversation was short. Uh, one video game in my childhood that drained hours and drained my parents' money. Sorry. Sorry, parents out there. Sorry, Blockbuster, for anybody that lived in our area that really wanted to play this game. But, uh, dibs. Uh, was, uh, Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. Oh, God. That was the guy. <laughs> that, that game. The brothers I, are in a little bit of distress oh, right now. Oh, <laughs> just a little bit. That game, I must have completed... Oh my gosh. so many times. Like, in the double digits. We are we are in the double digits of how many times I've completed this game. You would start it over and play it all the way yes. through to the end? Again? Yes. yes, again. I again absolutely and again several times. love this game. I don't know why. I've even played it. I think through. that was my first taste of like Japanese culture or just it, what yeah. I, what I thought of as Japanese gaming. Even though I'm pretty, I don't I don't know if it was made in the West. The West, I would have to look that up. No, but, I think it was made in the East. I'm okay, it was sure. probably made in the. Uh, but like it was just amazing are. going uh, a ninja. His, his fat chubby friend, uh, a toy a toy robot, and a that, chick, and a chick that turned into a mermaid. Yep, it was and uh, a chick, and a chick, and just giant robots. The the you giant robot that, that was the most awesome one of, part. One, one oh poignant God. moment. Feminism. It, one, I'm just kidding. <laughs> one poignant moment in my childhood were the boss battles, specifically the final boss battle when. Probably my last playthrough that I've ever played until I decided to grow up and be just the most loserest loser ever was... Those were some years. Yeah, those were some years. <laughs> yep. I never knew that you could do a beam special attack. I was attack. thinking about yeah, that. Oh, my God. I, I never knew oh. you could do a beam special attack yeah. until I was... Just moments away from defeating this final boss. I was down in my health. I was just... Pressing the s the crap out of buttons, and somehow I hit the right combination to unleash a laser mouth beam that, that awesome. obliterated the final boss, and that made my day. That and along with um like Devil May Cry oh. three. Yeah, Devil May Cry. Uh, look, Talmadge and I are both big Devil May Cry fans. I love it. Love the series. Big, big, big fan. fan. It, it tends to be the final moments for me in boss battles to where I decide, hey, I'm going to pull shit out of my ass. And somehow <laughs> got this super mega demon form well, while I was well, freaking out. That, that That's actually Devil May Cry 2. 2, okay. Yeah. Never mind. 2 folks at home. 
<laughs> the other game. Check. Well, he, yeah, I know. The, that, it's considered the black sheep of the family, but that, that final boss battle was pretty cool, especially, uh, you know, and I did some investigation to that. You see, Talmadge, it's a form that's only accessible if you are, when, whenever you're at the absolute lowest HP in a boss battle, and it triggers, it's it's called the Majin form. Oh it's, my god. It was so cool, because then you just obliterate the final boss. I'm just, oh, it, it was yeah. absolutely amazing. That gave me my last bit of rump to go and just uh, just kill him. It was it was amazing. Um, what about the present day? Yeah. What are they doing? We're, we're, looking, present at, we're looking at some present day gaming. Present day, day. Um, present, day. present day, present day, present day, present day. Anything recently that you play that you just love? I like it probably coincides perfectly with this podcast that I decided to do, but right now I am playing the fuck out of Pokemon Moon. Officially sponsored by the Midnight Games. We yes. are <laughs> we, we are we are Pokemon Trademark. We are Pokemon Moon. <laughs> yeah. Well I'm gonna pick up Pokemon but Sun. It's at uh, I don't know, the the la the last set of uh, Pokemon games I really didn't Play too much. So for Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. It's, I, oh, I, I didn't oh, even. Wait, I, I forgot. I didn't those. even touch those. I did not touch them for the life of me. Just because after a while, I've played them since the beginning. First Pokemon I ever caught was a Caterpie. Thank you, Ash Ketchum from the original series, because I caught a fucking Pidgey thanks to you I because. The like very, very best. best. Like, no, <laughs> do you mean Caterpie? You got a Caterpie because of that? Caterpie, yeah. Caterpie. Yeah. 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 But you got Pidgey, too. I, got, I did. Pidgey was next on that list, but Caterpie was my first one. Um, I will travel across the land. Sorry, that's cool. Searching uh, they're far and wide. Okay, none of that bullshit. None of that bullshit. Midnight Games. Hey, stop it. Yes. Stay. No, it's that's not even Midnight Games. Sing along. Hey, 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 calm down. It's yeah. my turn. It's okay. my turn. It's time to stop. It's, 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 it's my turn. It tickle you. I got well, a you cookie. Can, you can't shine in Pokemon Moon. It's too dark. Or is it dark enough for you to shine? Uh, I got a cookie. But getting rid of HMs and just the... Very interesting Pokemon that I've met so far. I mean, I'm probably only like 12 hours in. Evolved the shit out of a lot of them. <laughs> only, only 12 hours only, in. Only half a day. And I'm, a, I'm absolutely loving it. Just, uh, I, I'm going to be playing it on the trip up Kentucky. I'm going to be... Uh, We're going out it. to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> mm. F FYI. <laughs> we're going to Kentucky. Yeah, we're visiting family. F FYI. Um... And I'm, and I'm probably going to be playing the crap out of it because they also got rid of gems. Like everybody who listens to any of anybody or in gaming news whatsoever, they got rid of gem battles for um, trials and essentially battling the kahunas, which are what you can consider gem leaders. So they got rid of gems, but they didn't really get rid of gems. Kind of, kind of, sort of. But it's kind of like doing the yeah. Elite Four early on, because it's only four Kahunas, so oh, it's wow. like it's like doing the Elite Four over a uh, a great expanse of time, huh. and I love it. Right now, I'm riding a Taurus. It's just it's amazing. That's that's, uh, that's, that's all cool. I can say about it. No, uh, you see, it's interesting because I heard and I didn't know this, or maybe I did and it just it just blanked out to me. But apparently, like the original OG creator of Pokemon passed away, <laughs> and I just. I don't think so. Or designer of the game. Maybe it was a designer, because I don't like think... Like the main I... designer of the game, someone like that. Oh, God. Yeah, now, I gotta, away. now was, I gotta look up It was stuff. probably a designer, because the original concept um, came from a... Uh, what, Shigeru... Sachi... Mian, was no, it? it's a uh, Sachiro... Uh... Oh, yeah, Shigeru was all about it's, that um... Pikmin. Sorry. Yeah. But, some, I, I, <clears throat> but I some head guy up there, and the yeah. reason why Sun and Moon is kind of so drastically different from everything else in the series thus far is because, well, there's a new head designer or something like that going on, but I don't Me. know necessarily how true that is. That's just what I heard. And I heard this from Keegan, once again going back to Keegan, who is the biggest Pokemon buff I know out of anyone. Like, if there's Tony. anyone I need to ask about Pokemon, it's Keegan. Tony would be my guy. So, it looks like... Oh, my. Okay, he's a part of a shocking death hoax. It is Satoshi Tajiri. Okay, Satoshi. so... Satoshi. I'm sorry. Satoshi. Satoshi-san. I'm sorry for filling the internet with more fake news. Um, which, <laughs> brings me, which brings me to a relevant segue that I'm going to kind of get off on. Yeah. Third Pokemon game coming out for the Nintendo Switch. 
the first time that a Pokemon game is going, uh, I mean, like, uh, Wait, catching, a catching like, one, like a, beside, like, besides like a Pokemon. Main, like a main series yeah, game against Pokemon? besides Pokemon Coliseum and or all that good stuff. and stuff like that, yeah. Is um, coming to the Nintendo Switch. It's gonna really? Be, it's going to be like the yellow to Two. red and blue on uh, originally. Oh, so so, so it's going to be like, it, I think it's called Pokemon Stars, and it's coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, it's, Ooh. it's I like, I can't help personally wait. Like, the Switch... Seeing that commercial made me a believer in Nintendo again because it just looks amazing. And now they're actually bringing a handheld Pokemon game to a console. But that's yeah. also a handheld, which brings up an interesting question. Are they going to do a separate handheld which, or are they which, just kind of banking on this idea? I mean, in the end, it's just it's just kind of the GameCube's version of yeah. that thing where you could play the cartridge game on the big TV screen. Oh, you Except remember that? Better. Except better, <laughs> and it's going to be it's amazing. Like, it's like combining that and everything that Wii U was supposed to do into better. Yeah. Which, <laughs> th- which thank you, Nintendo, for waiting and making the Switch because, I mean, all right now I'm going to consider it just amazing, even if it's not all you haters out there. Yeah. Well, you know, that brings me to an interesting question. What do you want to see from the industry down the line? What I want to see down the industry line is actually nothing to do with virtual reality. Shocker. <laughs> um, I just so- had questions. It's um, <laughs> something that I've been thinking about for a long time. It's... Um, I don't I I don't know how difficult it would be to build, but I want a video game that would switch genres on you. Uh, what what I what I thought I guess what I thought of it as is kind of a video game where you're starring somebody that's it's kind of like a virtual reality kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, tournament style and it switches genres on you. Like you could be uh, completing missions in an RPG that could unlock the shooter portion of it or go on from that mm. but not something <clears throat> like gimmicky not, not, clun- not, not like clunky not, and gimmicky not, not like. kind of like WarioWare where you're kind of doing stuff like that what are you talking about WarioWare <laughs> is the OG <laughs> 10 out of 10 best game ever not sure why I never mentioned it until now that's okay <laughs> War- WarioWare but not something <laughs> kind of like that something where it actually combined like like you get all the actual fun. RPG mm-hmm. creators, actual shooter creators, actual puzzler creators. Not somebody yeah. that's like a big shooter who's suddenly trying to delve into making like a JRPG. What, what are you talking about? You're telling okay. me that Scott Cawthorn can't make an RPG just because he made a successful horror indie genre no, no. series? Have, no. you, have you played FNAF World? No. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's interesting that you would, you would mention this because. Whenever you th- whenever you talk about uh, crossing genres, I always reflect on Metal Gear Solid Four because a couple times it switches up. Like uh, if for spoilers, by the way, for those of you who haven't played. Spoiler out the warning: resume. We're going to give you a few seconds just to think about your life. And I'm ready to move on. Well, I, guess, I guess that was a few seconds. That was my whole life right there. <laughs> okay, so Metal Gear Solid 4, do you remember when you go back to Shadow Moses and you have to pilot Metal Gear Rex? <laughs> and yes. Do I remember? Yes. It's an on-rail shooter, and then it's a giant, awesome, badass mech fight. I'm a big fan of Metal Gear Solid, by yes. the way. And then this, by the way, is still one of my most all-time favorite final battles in a video game. That, that final battle against Liquid Ocelot. Where it turns into a fighting game. Yeah, yep. where it's like a fighting game. It was That was... Well, I'll admit, Hideo Kojima is just... He, he is somebody that pushes his limits when it comes to making video games and stuff like that. Right. And he's just amazing. Thank you for teaming up with Norman Reedus, by the way. We're we gonna throw we as many... love that baby oil thing. <laughs> yes, yeah. we're going to push as many pop culture relevant things in this as <laughs> we can. We love that baby oil mm-hmm. thing with Norman Reedus. Like, you okay, well, Norman? Well, that's a strong word. <laughs> yeah. do, you okay, Freaked Norman? Out. Do, do yeah, you need a paycheck? Because <laughs> you look like you're going to be on The Walking Dead for a while longer, so why'd you do the baby oil thing, Norman? That's so strange. Because he wants to branch out with his creative side, just like Shia LaBeouf. Um, oh, gosh. But I guess I, I, I can see what you're talking about there. You get this, you know, the same story, same characters that you might love, who knows, you, but you grow with them in several different, you know, gaming uh, ways. Yeah, gives them yeah. a lot of different opportunities. Because that's what, I mean, that's... Something, I guess, you know, things with story mode, yeah. um, you know, a story to it, really get you because you start to really care about the character that you're, you oh, know, yeah. playing with. And 
and their lives and that, that you keep going so you get that you know that story and those characters that you love and you keep going through different styles of gaming and I think that would be cool too well I, <clears throat> I guess what essentially I want to see and they're probably going to make it is I guess just like a, a, a game version of Ready Player One that's the closest I can think to coming what my vision of this video game <laughs> or this benchmark thing is which uh, you guys got to read it We're Ready Player One I'm, I'm going to find it and give it to you for the oh, trip okay. but it's, it's just something that that has a story behind it like they're tra traversing through this system or so it's like SAO I guess in a way it's just like this big online world that's become amazing and you have to level up and maybe find easter eggs maybe look for hidden things to unlock different areas which are separated into different genres or you can stay in a genre that you absolutely love mm -hmm. and, and just yeah. and go from there like That'd that that to me sounds like, amazing because like, I'm not a big sports fan, but my God, if that game had a sports segment in it, I would play the <laughs> fuck out of it. Play the literal fuck out of it. Is this oh, where Lord. I don't tell everybody that you have every iteration of Madden since they first started <laughs> making them? Tyler! <laughs> oh, 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 wait. Did I say that out loud? Oh, no. Scratch that from the record. <laughs> NFL Street, son! What, what? Okay, uh, but that's what I would like to see in the future. Whether it comes to fruition, more than likely not, because that sounds like a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of patience being tried, and that just doesn't sound worth it in the end. But to me, it sounds uh, amazing. Like if you had, a, you know, an endless amount of money, endless amount of time, you would probably oh, do I something would, like I that. I would hire the fuck out of every video game company that I thought made a great different genre. So, EA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! EA Streets. Uh, Play the game. Um, uh, I would, I would take, like, Cliff Blazinski and freaking make him... The, I probably butchered your last name. I'm sorry if you ever come across this. Please don't come across this. Like, his... his uh, He's sitting here like, this. what? His That's not my elements. name. Uh, uh, Satoshi's uh, Pokemon, just hunting, gathering... Yeah. Dungeon crawlers, get not even like Pokemon catching them, just like monster games. Just combining all of these geniuses. And then together. we get the pe the person who headed up the Fable series. What was yep. his name? Uh, just wait, uh, just wait. Uh, uh, Peter uh, Monley. We get Peter Monley and the guy who headed up No Man's Sky to deliver a bunch of big promises that <laughs> we can't actually deliver on. I hate you because I've still yet to play it because my well, Intel GPU doesn't work for it. That got really loud. Well, I'll tell you that... that uh, very, very... Repetitive. Peter Maleo... I, I like... I, I mean... The, the P Peter Maleo's problem was that the, the technology just isn't wasn't there at that point in time. Maybe if he started promising all those things now, and Fable, the original Fable was, which is still probably considered by many people to be the best out of the three. Oh, yeah. If it was made now, he could probably have delivered on a lot of those, those promises. You know, the, that's that's the problem is big dreamers trying to back up a lot of things they say, but that's another topic for another day, another time. Another time. Maybe if you guys love it this much, putting me on the spot, Travis. I'm gonna throw the the shade, the spotlight, the ever launching are, corruption are you, are you of my fist on your on dangling. Blast? I I don't know. <laughs> Does that mean I'm lit? If I put you on blast? Yes. Shit, I'm yeah. too old for this stuff. Travis. You're on yes. fleek. You're on blast. Hello. We're saving, in my opinion, we're saving the best for last. Oh, Lena. <laughs> well, well, that's because... Fuck. You're a little biased, aren't you? <laughs> I'm biased. I'm you like, no, uh, no biased at all. It's because it, you like macking on his face. Okay. Not right now. I don't know, not right now, sure. but uh, just in so, general. But Travis. I have been in the past, and I hope to in the future. Exactly. Yeah, me too. Travis, I love Elena. Favorite, uh, favorite past childhood gaming experience? Go. Oh, God. You know, that's a hard one, because I was trying to choose between... <clears throat> you had enough time. So, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's only been like an hour. No excuses. Uh, I've been trying to choose between Super Mario RPG, Final Fantasy IV... Fuck. <laughs> Oh, I got, oh my god, I know. Oh, or or Fire Emblem, the first Fire Emblem to come out in the States. Uh, the OG the, Fire Emblem. Oh my god, it, it, I'm choosing straight from childhood. There's a lot of good choices. But Travis. What? Your favorite game is sitting right there I in know. the N64 right now. Do you know right what bothers now? me the entire time, everybody? <laughs> is I'm looking, I'm st literally staring at Superman 64, and every time I stare at it, I, I feel the, de the very demons of hell themselves. 
crawling up to try and consume me, going, played this game, Travis. We'll that throw it in your face. That's very descriptive. I, know. <laughs> yeah, I, I segued you. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, no. I get segued Favorite easily. Favorite childhood game. Okay. Again, it's a toss-up for me between Final Fantasy IV, Super Mario RPG, Legend of Seven Stars, and uh, the original Fire Emblem. For, for this, yeah. I'm going to pick... Oh, drum roll, please. Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. Great Super choice. Mario okay. Very good choice. Because I'm, I'm as well. <laughs> and Midnight the Geek sing along again. The, the reason it will happen, folks. The, the reason why I'm picking this particular game is because a lot of the same people who did Final Fantasy IV worked on Super Mario RPG back from uh, back whenever Square Enix was SquareSoft and did and collabed with uh, Nintendo. This game for me did a lot of things. It showcased how you. First of all, I love Super, I love Mario. I love Super Mario. Great. Uh, I'm a big Nintendo buff. But um, it showed me that you could take those characters and put them in the RPG setting, and it would be the story could be so interesting. There's a lot of potential uh, growth and character. I, it was amazing. Um, and the aspects from from Final Fantasy from SquareSoft uh, sunk in at certain points of time, especially with the bonus boss who took a lot of inspiration from Final Fantasy IV, which was the big game out at that point in time. And I sunk in so many hours, I can't tell you how many times, guys, I've had Billy over, and we would just say, hey, screw it, let's let's start over from beginning and play through <laughs> Super Mario RPG Legends of <laughs> Stars. My, I actually... 17. Huh? 17 times. Well, yeah, it was a huge amount. I don't remember. <laughs> but I got to the point... It was It was, it was huge. I, I know. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. okay. Save, save that for the Shut space. up, lap adopt save, save, save that. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, okay. Whoa, hey, sorry. Uh, okay, hey, whoa, Travis. Yeah. Continue. Uh, we would... Okay, literally, we would sit down... <laughs> Who there, saved it? <laughs> there was one time... I know. There was one time I remember whenever I was in my teens, and I sat down with, the, with uh, Billy when he came over, and my gosh, I played... That game for twenty five hours straight. I did. I didn't stop. I stopped to pee, Damn. and to eat. I played. <laughs> I don't even think I've done that. Yeah, I played it. I did not sleep. I just. I did not stop until I played the played through the whole game. It took me twenty five hours, and it was during a weekend, obviously. But uh, that, I'm pretty sure you just skipped. Now it is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, now gosh. the story is. I, I, between mom and Coach Jim, I can't even. I can't even skip work. Uh, skip work or skip school. Uh, whenever I was an adult, oh my gosh, they actually made me go into work and coach these kids while I was thrown up at the pool. And I, you know, so I'd be like, okay, it's a swim. I'd be like, okay, I have to go line up. Now, excuse me, I'm going to throw up. And I go, He's a swim coach, by the way. <laughs> just just <laughs> FYI. Mm, yeah. Super sexy. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> but, you know, 25 <laughs> hours down, and we beat Super Mario RPG, Legend of Seven Stars, and I, I was so satisfied. I even did all that crazy bonus stuff, getting the, the lazy shell armor oh, and lazy shell yes. items. Lazy. Yeah. Lazy yeah. shell the best. Oh, the Axum Rangers? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> My stuff right there. Ever wanted to favorite Power Rangers just be total morons? Yeah. yeah. And we're talking, villains? We're talking about the Cooper Brothers from Paper Mario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Damn Slow down. It. So, out of the games that I've watched you play recently, what's your favorite right now? I would probably say it's that sitting my... right there. Oh my 64. <laughs> and we segue back to Superman sixty four. As oh often as I can, because he's such a big Superman buff, and oh. it's it, and it's entertaining. It's literally trash. Oh, okay, God. so I would probably have Rock to say Rocksteady make a better game. That uh, my current favorite modern game uh, would have to be either The Witcher Three or Dragon Age Inquisition. Maybe uh, you know what for the for the, for this right now because I know a lot of you probably for, talked about The Witcher. I'm going to talk about Dragon Age Inquisition. Listen, I I very rarely ever just skip work. I'm that kind of guy where like okay, I got a job to do. Whoa. You yeah. put that out there. Yeah, I very rarely <laughs> skip work. Yeah, I'm going to put it out there. But uh, so you just get personal days for a reason. I don't know. So I I sat what? down. What he's day. not a teacher. <laughs> He's a teacher of the soul. Yeah. Of the swimming. Oh, there we go. Of Superman. Okay. I think I'm getting context clues from Tyler right yeah, now. Yeah, he's, he's, kind of, he's kind of flipping out here. I think he's fisting my soul right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay. God, Tyler, calm down. No. Okay. okay, Dragon so, Age Inquisition. I'll take Dragon Age Inquisition for several reasons. First, 
Uh, one thing, not not just one thing with my kid. Bioware does several things very well. First of all, Andromeda, thank you very much. Uh, they they make you feel like the characters that you are that you are they they you have in your party, your companions. They they make them feel like real people. They make them feel like friends that you really want to get to know, that you want to develop, that you want to help. Uh, they also with it, they did this better, I feel, with Dragon Age than they did with Mass Effect. They really make the choices that you made in previous games matter. Like it makes a huge, it could make a huge difference in your story, the context of what's going on, uh, certain issues you'd have come about. Like I mean, it does in life. I <laughs> can't. Like in Mass Effect Three, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mass Effect Three was so fulfilling. Uh, yeah, the ending. Oh my gosh. But. <laughs> Every moment felt grand and epic, and it didn't feel wasted. To me, that was a true rebirth of what Bioware is supposed to be. After many people didn't like um, Star Wars The Old Republic, it's turned itself around very much so nowadays. But when it was first released, not only was it outrageously expensive, it was considered to be a huge mistake because of all the problems with it. But for me, Dragon Age Inquisition, just the scale, the character development, uh, the impact of choices, it was... It just the lore. The lore. Oh my God! I obsess over the lore of Dragon Age so hard. Uh, it, it, <laughs> hey, I love it about. <laughs> oh God, Tyler! No. Yeah, it means. Upper two. <laughs> he has such a rage, raging lore erection. I can't help it. I uh, yeah, I know, right? Okay. Trademark the Midnight Geeks. Lore erection. <laughs> so, uh, what I like, I get so excited. <laughs> I get so excited whenever I think about There's the two. future. Oh yeah, I know. I see it right there. He's being silly. I get so excited whenever I think about whenever the next game comes out uh, in the Dragon Age series. And it was funny because Dragon Age Origins was kind of made as just like, a, oh, what game can we make really cheap so that... In many ways, it was supposed to be a successor, a spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate, but was it was also developed as a cheap, cheap, quick way to make money for Mass Effect 2. And once you know it, Dragon Age Origins spawned a huge following, and I'm proud to be one of those followers. Which, uh... Uh, begs the question, never think that something you make is going to be crap because you will never know who's going to love it and blow it up in the end. Mm -hmm. Scott Cawthorn, thank you for all your nightmares uh, towards everything because now you've spawned a really weird series. With really weird fan art. Oh my gosh. Very weird fan art. Now, present here, video here gaming aside, yeah, here, here <laughs> is some fan art for you. Beep, dee, 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 dee. There is going to be no fan art. No, 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 no. I was going to start saying that things requires, like, oh, I like that. requires artists, one. and we just, that's just a lot of energy when, right now. When you think of the future of video gaming and everything you want to come across, what is something that you want to see eventually happen? Oh gosh, you know, it's so crazy. I, 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 was, uh, I was pondering a lot of that just today because we're getting to this point in time where there are a lot of developments and virtual reality really opens up that p potentiality for immersion but I guess regardless of how it's delivered what I really want to see is cinematic immersion not only are you immersed and vested in these characters in the lore and what's going on in the world but I want it still to be done in a very cinematic way sometimes we get so caught up with the idea of realism that we uh, lose the fact that a video game is also supposed to be fantastical, where you're supposed to be able to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do. Like, um, when we think about realism, or we, where we talk about things that, um, you know, that there are limits of doing, uh, when you look at games um, nowadays that try to be more realistic with the physics and whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, they tend to restrain a lot of the more uh, fantastical actions that you could do. That, that was original in childhood. When you start bringing yeah. about fall, uh, fall damage, and a platformer, Bubsy, I'm looking at you, Bubsy. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off, Bubsy. It. I. Okay, so I'm, I see what you're getting at. Yeah. I see what you're getting at. So, but uh, if only but, they can make live action video games. Oh, well, I, that, well, no, I was no, thinking about the, that. Well, that we call that full motion video. Yeah. That was the 90s. I know. But <laughs> Detro ah. Detroit being human. Okay. Oh, wait. No, I know what you're talking about. Oh, God. <laughs> They've actually got stuff like that out, actually. Yeah. I may have to show you. I may have to show you. But, okay. But, you know... See, I'm ignorant. <laughs> I that full motion video. Whenever I talk about that cinematic immersion, too, like... Critical. I love that epic flair. Like, I, I, I think about, for example, 
in Kingdom Hearts 2 when you could do those mega ultra awesome counter reactions that were that were crazy and over the top and sick nasty. Uh, my, you know, things like that to me seem so cool that you can do that. This this crazy imaginary fantastical thing. So it's it's not going too crazy on the realism. Obviously, we want to want it to be realistic in a way, but bringing back kind of the flair that made it known that we're in a video game. We're not yeah. trying to recreate real life. We're trying to be creative and show you that you can dream these amazing things. Yeah, yeah like uh, like I just watched a uh, um, a little bit of Final Fantasy Fifteen Kingsglaive, and. I haven't good, seen, good didn't, didn't see all of it. I would love to sit down with you two and actually watch it. But it looks like the, it, the, the characters look almost real. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you get this real sense like they feel like people and you know, not just not just fake caricatures. But at the same time, you have the awesome, sick, nasty teleportation fighting and <laughs> spells. I mean, it, it feels like that over the top, but still very grounded. Mm-hmm direction that I really want uh, video games to move in. Mm -hmm. I just kept thinking to myself, man, if we could do things like that, like if we could play that action right there Mm -hmm. with characters that look this good, with with this immersion uh, and sound and sights, it, it would, it would be amazing. So, so it's all, it's almost full VR, but not the VR, just trying to capture that essence. Yeah. In that platform, mm-hmm. and it'd be okay if, if they did if they didn't virtual reality. I'm down. Well, but, it's it's also yeah. spawning off like Westworld. If anybody has anybody mm-hmm. been watching Westworld or know what Westworld I, is, I know what Westworld is. Yes. Okay, it's it it seems kind of like that, yeah. and and that in itself I think has sparked a lot of debate in the video game the company community or anything like that. Like it's brought some ideas about uh, what they could do with that if robotics, AI, or anything like that advanced to a point, just the, the stuff that they could do with that, which may be another topic for another day, because right now we're going on an hour talking to you folks with our wonderfully lustrous voices. You heard me, lustrous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trademark Midnight Geeks. Uh, <laughs> actually, fuck it. Trademark this entire video. I can't take <laughs> shit from us. Damn can't take right. shit from us. Um... I want to thank everybody here for tonight, uh, bringing this all together. I didn't think we'd actually talk this long because me myself, I don't, I don't talk much, and didn't think we'd be talking for this long, which is really nice. If everybody out there in the internet world likes what they heard, want to hear more, want some ideas of what you would like to hear, actually in the comments or on our Facebook, our Twitter, anywhere you want to find us. Throw out some ideas or anything you'd like us just to BS through out the entire night. Even in the comments below, I want to hear from you guys. What is your favorite past, present, and future video game that you see yourself playing or have seen yourself playing? Uh, Throw it down there. Let's hear your stories out there, folks. I want to thank Tyler bringing out his uh, charm and wit as usual, being amazing. (laughs) Amazing. Golf claps. Golf claps. Elena, even though she's not darbed, Darved. 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 Trademark. Midnight Geeks. (laughs) (laughs) Even though she's not dived hardcore into video gaming, just what she brings to the table, the casual gaming, and what it means to relax and And just just enjoy it. it Do you mind if I say something about that real quick? Yeah, go for it. I really, really appreciate... Um, not not just you guys as people because I love you, but the thing that you're doing with this this channel in general because people like me who maybe we just like to watch games or maybe we really like just you know simple gaming like that. We don't necessarily we haven't necessarily played lots of things. You, I feel like I've always been able to talk about that and learn from you guys about mm-hmm. that. So that's what this you know, this platform is really doing for you guys, not only, you know, playing the, the, the new stuff and, and getting into that, but also just being that, you know, space where people like me who haven't played very much can come and learn about um, the joys of video gaming. Yeah. <laughs> so thank yeah, you, yeah. you guys. That's really awesome. Uh, thank no, you. thank me. Thank video games. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, video games. Uh, like anybody else out there, if you love what you hear and what you see, show a friend. Maybe we can make them happy or make them sad. Make them troll so hard that they want to get us back, but that's okay. We troll back harder sometimes. 
And thank you to Troll. When and the world th- trolls you, when, you troll them back. <laughs> when the world trolls you, you troll back. And a thank you to Travis for bringing oh, out uh, some amazing stuff from his past, present, Side. and even bringing about some things that maybe we have missed in the video game industry as a whole, trying to come up with realism in a nature that probably will persist until we get that one special developer. It's like, hey, old school, let's bring it back. <laughs> yeah. So I want to thank everybody here tonight for everything they brought and to the table. And thank you, Talmud. Oh, thank you, Talmud. No, 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 Which is input no, as well. No, no. Golf pops, golf pops. The, the god of the midnight And everything cubes. that you do for this channel, because this our is king, awesome. Our king, our sovereign, <laughs> my not, liege. Not me. If you thank, thank me by liking the crap out of this. Thank me for that. If Please you like, do, everyone. Oh, oh, everybody. Yes. Please. Or if this went on for too long, tell us. What do you want to hear? I'm up for feedback. I said I really liked it, but shut up after a while. (laughs) (laughs) I may cry. Who knows? We'll find out. But thank you for listening, everybody. Especially if you made it this far. (laughs) If you made it this far, you are a goddamn champ. And you're getting a gold star. Just give me a P.O. box I can send it to. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Well, write your name on (laughs) (laughs) We will draw you pictures. They will be shitty pictures, but we will draw you pictures. Thank you for fan for, art. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're good. Thank you for listening, everybody. If you liked what you heard so far, do us a favor, hit that like button. Please. You want to hear more of what goes <laughs> Want to hear more of what goes on? The only next logical su- step is to subscribe. Please. Oh god, please do oh, that. Oh god, please love us. Did We're not desperate or anything. Did not Just like kidding. any of this. God damn it. You are an hour and shit. An hour and almost 10 minutes into this. What are you doing? You must love us. Maybe you're just in the closet about this. Well, guess what? It's time for us to bust open that closet, lend out our hands, Hi. and show you <laughs> Hi there. Hi and, there. and show you a broad, expansive, amazing world. Thank you for watching and listening, and have a good night. Damn, Damn right. The first example is one of my favorites. We're going to talk about the Knights of the Cross from the book series, The Dresden Files. They're an order of three knights, whom each wield a sword that possesses a nail from the crucifixion of Christ. They're the ultimate good guys, and no less badass for it. All three of them display countless examples of bravery, honor, and combat, as well as self-control in situations outside of fighting. Especially my main man, Michael Carpenter. This man will stare down dragons, beat down demons, and still take the time to check and make sure you're okay. Of course, I could spend hours gushing about the Knights of the Cross. <laughs> Michael Carpenter. <laughs> but let's take a look at my other example. The second example that I would like to take a look at is from one of my all-time favorite video game series, Dragon Age. There is actually a group of professional soldiers in the fictional country called Orlais that correspond very closely with our real-life knights. What are they called? Well, they're called Chevaliers. Sound familiar yet? Maybe even as something you heard about earlier? Yep. Well, those chevaliers are professional soldiers whom are supposed to adhere. Thank you for watching. You have a good night. Damn right.